The key to trading any market, whether it's stocks, options, futures, crypto, or whatever, is to have a combination of technical analysis plus trader psychology in order to gain what we call a systematic trading edge. This means that you can go into the market with a plan and a strategy and have a higher chance to generate positive returns from your investments. Now, of course, if you've been doing any research on trading on YouTube or whatever, then you've definitely heard of keywords like support and resistance, breakouts, breakdowns, maybe even short squeezes. But you might not actually understand how this all kind of plays a role in the broader term of trader psychology, because at the end of the day, you have to understand that when you're looking at a chart, when you're looking at a candlestick chart, it's not just random candles you're seeing. No, it's actually market participants that created those candles. And this one simple idea was a breakthrough for me because now when I look at a stock chart, I can look at it and answer the question of, are there shorts trapped? Does this have a likelihood to squeeze? Or is this just a random pump and dump? And this requires more than just basic horizontal support resistance lines. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my idea of how I use technical analysis plus trader psychology to gain a trading edge. And I'm gonna be showing that with you by looking at three different stocks that had amazing moves. The first stock went from 78 cents to $3.39. The second stock went from $3.41 to $15 per share. And then the last one went from 41 cents to $1.40. And these all happened in the span of just a few days. You see, with trading stocks, you don't have to wait months and months or even years to get hundreds and hundreds of percents of returns on your trades. Now, if this sounds interesting to you, make sure to stick to the end of the video. And of course, if you like this content, smash that like button for me and let's get into it. Okay, so before we get into the actual stocks themselves, we need to make sure that we understand a very specific thing here. So first things first, in this specific video, yes, we'll be focusing mainly on small cap penny stocks, but this idea of using technical analysis and trader psychology works anywhere, right? Because end of the day, whenever you look at a stock chart, you're seeing past trades and past trades happen from people trading those instruments. So if you can get an understanding of where the past traders are and you can get an understanding of how they're likely going to react at certain price points, you're going to be able to gauge a likelihood of what they're probably going to do when those price points are, are either breached on the upside or broken down on the downside. Now, for the purposes of this specific video, we're gonna be talking first about scanners. So scanners are super, super important, especially in the small cap market, because of course, there's like 15,000 different stocks. So how are you gonna know which ones you wanna trade? The best way to do that is a scanner. Now, the scanner that I recommend highly is called Scans. I have a whole video breakdown. You can click the link somewhere up here that breaks down exactly what my scanner settings are. And if you want to get scans, there is a link down below to click that video and also sign up. If you don't have the money to get scans, well, you have to kind of understand that trading is a business. So it is a business expense in the end, but there are better ways. I have a community called TradeBuddy where I share my watch list every single day. Plus I share my scans every single day. So you can join that for cheaper than scans is and get access to all the same stuff. But moving past that, when we're looking at these specific stocks, we have to understand some of the key things. Number one, one of the main things I love to see is a stock break over a pre-market high. This is significant because when a stock breaks over a pre-market high, it signals to all the market participants that this stock is actually bullish. It's, you know, it was able to spike up on some news, set a high, it pulled back, and then it broke out to new highs. That is a bullish stock. So you'll see on all these three different stocks, they all have that same similarity of breaking over a key level, most likely pre-market high. So the first stock we have is called KZIA. This was a stock that had a big spike on July 10th. And this is what we call a first green day with news setup. So as we can see here, there was a news release at 7.30 a.m. where it says that Kazia Therapeutics announces phase 2-3 clinical trial results for Paxilis, whatever, whatever, whatever. The, the actual thing doesn't really matter, but they had a positive news release and that brought new market participants to the market. We can see that in pre-market, there was some active trading. You can see that that news release came out right around here because there was a big spike in volume and the stock spiked up itself. And it spiked up and it set a pre-market high. 
at what we love to see the daily 200 moving average, the daily simple 200 moving average, whatever you want to call it. So that was the pre-market high. Now, what I like to see is I like to see stocks break out over that. So we can see that into market open, the stock pulled back, and what happened? So this is where we're going to really get into the actual trader psychology portion. We can see that in that first five minute candle, there was an initial pop and then it kind of reversed. This is super important because what that means is that there was literally more sellers than buyers at that point. Sellers are also short sellers. So we have evidence now that there are short sellers that are betting on the stock to fail and what they're likely going to be looking for is for it to break down new lows of like maybe below 25 or lower. But if it doesn't do that, well, then they're trapped. So the stock pulled back, it held some nice support, and then boom, broke out to new highs. So now we have a combination of both technical analysis with the breakover pre-market high. Plus, we can tell from psychology that there is likely short sellers that are trapped in this thing. So if we just use the line chart and just draw simple horizontal levels, we can now accurately determine that, hey, as long as this pre-market high holds as new support, anyone that shorted this stock is trapped. And so what being trapped means you know, for a short seller is to, to close your position, you have to buy back into the stock. Buying is gonna cause buying pressure. And of course that leads to a short squeeze. And as you can see, this thing had a mega squeeze all the way up to highs of about $1.06 in the same day. And then in the next day, because it held higher lows, was able to break even higher to a high of $1.58. Using the idea of technical analysis and trader psychology to get a systematic trading edge. The second example that we have here is VRPX. Now this stock moved on July 8th and it had pretty much a very similar setup where this one was first green day with news. You can see that there was news that came out at the same exact time, 7.30 a.m., where you can see it says, Verpax Pharmaceutical secures a $2.5 million loan and an agreement with an institutional investor to negotiate additional funding. Sorry, my reading kind of sucks. Uh, but you can see positive news release. And so, of course, that drew in some volume to the stock. It spiked up and it started to break out pretty significantly. Now, this one's best setup wasn't exactly pre-market high. This is where things get a bit more complex, and this is why I have a whole course on trading and price action in specific. But this one instead held this kind of initial breakout point at 74 cents. But overall, same idea. It had this initial main resistance, pulled back, broke out of the market open, showed everyone that it was bullish and then anyone that was selling in pre-market is now trapped and of course once that previous resistance holds its new support the stock is still bullish and it's going to continue but that's not even the easy part right it, this super easy setup happened even later so this just goes to show that to trade penny stocks or small cap stocks or whatever you don't need to be early like sometimes these setups happen in the afternoon so you can watch a stock all day have a decent idea of what you want to trade and just stay patient for that setup. You can see here that market open high was right near 94 cents. And if I just draw a horizontal line from that point, boom, you can see previous resistance, new support. And this one's even better because there's a higher likelihood that there was, you know, I mean, we can see from that rejection at market open, there was 8 million shares traded huge huge volume candle that was stuffed so once that pulled back anyone that did sell there was hoping it wouldn't go higher but it did broke out to new highs of like a dollar 30 so anyone that did sell is now trapped and so for them to be trapped what's going to happen they're likely going to want to buy back in at the closest point to break even that they can because they don't want to risk that pain of going back into the red right that's the whole thing that's why previous resistance as new support works. It's not just because, oh, for some random reason, support or resistance is now support. No, it's because anyone that was influencing that resistance and sold, if it becomes support, they need to buy back in or else they're going to be losing again, right? So they're going to buy back in, they're going to cause support to hold and it's going to fuel that squeeze. And if we look at this stock 
And if you bought in at 95 cents and held overnight because it kept on holding support, you can see in the next few days held more support. And then boom, we had a mega squeeze where this thing jumped from 93 cents to three bucks per share using the idea of technical analysis plus Twitter psychology to get a trading edge. This wouldn't work if it was just support and resistance, but no, like you have to have some evidence that there are also shorts trapped at the same time. And now the last example, just to change things up a bit, is not on just a first green day with news, but this is actually a multi-day trend where we can see this is the hourly chart. So every candle represents one hour, okay? So there's about five days of price action here where this stock had very active trading, right? It spiked up, sold off back down. So there's sellers there, spiked up again into the 350s, sold off more sellers, and it rejected this 350 line quite a few times, right? There is a lot of evidence that there is sellers there. But notice how it was also making higher lows. Right? So even though there were sellers coming into the market and slamming it down, every time they were able to push it down, it held higher. So they, so they never got their profit targets that they wanted, right? They never got that big flush that they were expecting. And it looks like that there's someone or there's some participant in the market who was buying up the float and propping the stock up. And it kind of creates this phenomenon where like you can imagine if you have like a wet towel and, and you, you know, wring it out, this is shorts getting just wrung out and just slowly getting squeezed. And then finally, on July 10th, we had a breakout candle where it broke out to new highs, hit 440s, and then look at that pullback that happened. Look at that pullback right there. Previous resistance as new support with an extra understanding that this is a short squeeze because we understand Twitter psychology. And that was a very beautiful entry. And look at how far this thing squeezed. It went from 340s, 350s to in the same day, hit nine bucks per share. Over the next few days, held higher lows, squeezed up again, hit 14 bucks. After that, it was pretty hard to trade. I think this has found its top. That's just my own opinion. But you can see that finding these isn't too too difficult because number one all these stocks were on our watches in trade buddy i i showed everyone about these stocks before they moved and you'll see screenshots showing that right now so really the secret to trading success in any market whether it's stocks crypto forex options futures whatever sure understanding technicals is very important but you have to have a deeper level than that right it's not that simple you have to be able to look at the chart and understand that you're looking at market participants. If you can do that, then you have reached the next level of trading.